Hello, my name is Carol May Wittick. Welcome to Her Conversations, Tools for the Awakening Woman. Her is an acronym for Higher Energetic Resonance. This is the optimal state to embody in order to attract our highest desires. Who is the awakening woman? She is a woman who is seeking a greater possibility in her reality and looking for solutions. She knows being awakened is not a lofty ideal but a necessity. If she can transform herself, she can change the world. Her conversations will introduce you to talented women who will speak to your spirituality, sensuality and soul. They share their stories and explain how they are in service to the world. So let their words and these conversations embolden and inspire you. My guest on this week's Her Conversations is psychic and spiritual medium Andrea Daniel. Through her company, Andrea's Healing Hand of Light, she provides channeling, tarot reading and guidance services. During our conversation, she shares her insights about what is really happening on the planet right now, how distraction and division are being used to weaken the ascension of humanity and what we can do to heal and not fall into fear. So as always, I begin by asking my guests, her is an acronym for higher energetic resonance. When do you feel your most her? I feel like I am most her when I am healing somebody and as I'm channeling that person and I'm seeing that debris, that negative debris come off of them and go into its place, its back to its place of darkness and I can see that white light shining over my um, client or patient, so to speak, um, that's when I really feel that I'm her in my full, doing my full life purpose. Thank you so much. And just before we really get into speaking today, I just want to find out a little bit more about your background. Andrew, where did you come from in terms of like, when did you really tap into your gifts and know that this was the work that you were here to do? I grew up um, with both my parents. Um, and a younger sister and an older brother and another older brother. Yeah. Anyway, from a very young age, um, we were forced to go to Sunday school because that back then um, the Rindrush generation were raised and brought their, brought by the way they were raised onto us. And so I went to Sunday school every weekend, every Sunday um, in Sunday best clothes. And um, I learned about God. But at that time, I was just young and being spoon-fed, you know, into what is, has been tradition for many, many years throughout our fam- my family, both sides of my family. Anyway, um, I realised that I was different while I was um, always around other people at school and stuff like that. I, I'd always feel sensations and I'd always feel and hear um, frequency in my ears and things like that and my I tell my mother but she'd never understand what it is that I'm trying to say because it was hard to put into words okay so um off I went into my teens um and then I got to my 20s and I started to study uh, media studies um and I learned first learned about semiotics and the deeper side of um the media I then um, carried on learning and started looking for these signs everywhere, which were which I then realised they were absolutely everywhere. Okay, um, I then realised that I could manifest something by thought. I I think about something and it would happen, you know. And I would often think about someone and then I'd see them the next day or something like that. This went on until I got to about 30, in my 30s. I went to my cousin's baptism. While I was there, um, I was asked if I wanted to be baptised. At the time, I said, no, 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 I'm not ready. (laughs) Because I had my own relationship with God. So I didn't didn't see the need. Anyway, I allowed them to talk me into it. I felt compelled to do it. So I did it. I got baptised. And when I got out of that water, it was like Andrea was born. (laughs) Okay, so 
I started to feel things that I felt before, but stronger. I started to see things visually, like a mo- mini movie while I'm awake. And I was, ha- I was quite scary at first. Um, the ministers then told me that I had these gifts that were very unique. And I was basically like a hand-picked child of God. I didn't quite know how to take that because I I was just me, and I still am just me. But with that, I said, okay, I'm going to just have to wait it out. If it's there, like they say it is, it will come. So off I went off into Andrew's world and um, started to learn the Bible, the scriptures and stuff like that, to a point where I know them all off by heart. I then... um, As I got deeper into the Bible, I realised that a lot of the scripture wasn't quite adding up. There was bits that didn't make sense, and then I got told to use your intuition, which I I did anyway. But I I couldn't understand why something so precious was so difficult to understand. And you had to make your own metaphors and your um, your own assumptions to the meaning, you know, and... I was told just have faith, just believe. And it's like, "Mm, no, Andrew's not like that. At the end of the day, um, I only believe what I can see. I need the proven document or thing for me to believe. I can't just believe in something that's invisible, you know. So off I went digging. So I started digging. In the Bi- through the Bible scriptures, and I started to do some really deep research. This then took me through to the names not being real, um, the things that took place wasn't right. I was asking a lot of questions, so I went back to my minister, and I was told, "Yes, yes, you were right. Yes," and I was, I was quite upset because it's like why are you not teaching me this reason is because they can't because church is a 501c3 which is which is governed by the government right it's owned by the government it is a non-profit organization it's a business so everyone's hands are tied in terms of teaching the truth so you have to go looking for it yourself so i did I then found out the true names and I started walking as a Hebrew. Um, while I started walking as a Hebrew, I was still attending church and the, in the early stages and I got declared a prophetess and a healer in the church. Um, I kept studying and as I went deeper into my studies, I heard God's voice. And I realised that I was always hearing God's voice, that this is what it was. This was, the, this was the voice of the Most High, the Infinite One, the Source. So I kept being led by just that voice. I then decided it wasn't a good idea for me to go to church because I was now hearing this infinite, powerful voice, which was enough for me to build a relationship with. So I did that. I was then led by the Most High to go to the city of Los Angeles, which is Los Angeles. I didn't know why I was going. I was just going with the spirit. So I got there and ended up spending two years there with my auntie. And she was the only one in my family that received what I was saying at that time and said, there's only one creator, so I'm fine with what you're saying, and I agree totally with what you're saying. So I spent lots of time there. While I was there, I was healing a lot of people. Um, I managed to heal um, fluid on the lungs, a numerous amount of illnesses. I then got taught by the Most High to travel into different realms. I was then going into the realm where people haven't quite passed yet, but um, they, they were stuck. So I was there to instruct them whether to go up to the light or whether to come back into the physical body. So I did that a few times and was able to tell people they're going to be okay, 
just just hold on, they're going to be okay. And then, lo and behold, I would heal them and they would wake up out of the comas and things. So I then realized what they were saying to me at the church and what I was hearing from the most, I was correct. I then got led um, to Hinduism. Um, I can't tell you how I got there. I was walking in the spirit. So I just got there and everyone was like, have you turned into a Hindu? And I was like, I'm everything. The Most High is everything. There is no such thing as religion. He's everywhere. And the same voice I was hearing as a Hebrew I, 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 and as a Christian, I'm still hearing that same voice here in Hinduism. And so I learned the whole of Sanskrit. Um, I studied um, Islam. I learned all of the um, the Book of Islam, um, the Quran, um, and I made I what I realized was that the Most High was taking me through everything so that He would be able to show me Himself or herself because we don't know it's not a man it's 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 a God is everything the all so you know He wanted me it, it that all wanted me to see that. He was everywhere. She was everywhere. You know, the source is everywhere, and it's the same voice, Andrea. You know, it doesn't matter where you go, what you follow, Allah, uh, Yah- Yahuwah, Yahweh, Jesus, all of this, is. there's only one. There's only one. So I then began to walk as I then left to Hinduism. I was, I was then taken out of Hinduism by the all and started and led into doing what I do today, which is just spiritualism Um, and sharing what I have with the whole entire world and helping people to get to reach their higher self and, and and, and, and explaining to people all the things that I have experienced. So, there isn't anything that I haven't experienced. So I'm able to reach out to absolutely everybody in every situation. And I now realise that that's what the most high was doing all along. I, I have been through absolutely everything. And I, ha- I now know, and I embrace those things, even though I had to heal myself from, from those things, I now find those things so valuable to who I am today. I'm, a, I'm able to reach out, and that's that's amazing, very rewarding. Thank you, thank you for sharing that. Such a testimony, and like you know, like like um, like you're saying, like you've been through so much, and you have so many experiences, and I can completely resonate with that as well. We talked a little bit before we turned the mic yes. on, but you know, it's um, all of those experiences as as tough as they they were and have been. Um, just like put an extra layer of resilience and galvanization on you and it means that when you meet with people and they go oh I'm going through this you can talk from a position of like you know what I went through that as well (laughs) as as opposed to just being oh you know sympathetic you're you're in there you empathize you you know what it felt like to be in there on a on a day and day basis and then you realize actually that's something to be totally grateful for because those experiences have meant that you you're unshakable you know there's like you're just thinking I don't know what it is that can come get me now I really (laughs) do not because I've I've done been there and and many times had to work my way out of it on my own and you you know and, and and when you've done that then you're like come try it (laughs) really do you know because I know know that I have the strength and I've I've experienced it and um one one thing I wanted to really talk to you about as well there's so much that is happening in the world right now that people may not be aware of you know um because of obviously most people are getting their information from very limited sources but these limited sources kind of take up so much space and come with so much validity it would seem that everyone's entitled to believe them and won't even question the fact that what is being presented to them is going to be a version of the truth or a version of events that isn't true set up to lead them in a particular 
uh, way. I mean, we've we've seen the situation with the pandemic, which, you know, people are slowly waking up to what the truth may be around that. And some some will admit, some are ready to take it on board, some are not. You I mean, you can kind of tell who's walking down the street with the masks and the gloves will give you an indication as to where people are with their minds. Yeah. But um, so we have that. But one thing I really, you know, I think we should definitely touch on is just talking about the the timing because nothing is random about the events surrounding George Floyd okay and what that created particularly in the black community especially when we're talking about healing and wounds and truth and I'll let you have the mic (laughs) okay (laughs) okay right so basically we have all globally gone through the pandemic okay now what people don't realize is that the virus was existent existed maybe like 10 15 years ago and it, it is the flu it's just another version of the flu but this is different this is a mixture is is actually because i've done my research a man-made virus Yes, I said it is a man-made virus, and it consists of SARS um, and uh, um, the flu, the influenza, and the coronavirus. There's three elements in there. I've actually researched and found the pattern for this and how it was made and all of that. Okay, it's all there on the internet to be found if you're interested in finding it. Okay, so. That is what we went through. This was invented and brought out at this particular time, right, as a distraction, all right? And it is a distraction. The reason why it's a distraction is because there's a lot of things going on underground, literally, (laughs) and behind the scenes, which is not on our regular media, TV, television. The TV... The television is a square thing with a screen with images, stories of things that they want you to know and things that will lose you, okay, in the knowing. So that's why it's called tell, lie, vision, all right? Now, there's a lot of words that are like that, but we'll go back to that again a bit later, Carol. Um, Now... Everything that's put on the news concerning the COVID-19 has been lies, okay? I'm not going to say there is there wasn't a virus. There is, as I said, a man-made virus. But those figures that they were releasing are incorrect. They were way too high. How do I know? I'm a medium. <laughs> I'm a circuit medium. Um, people were in the hospitals. They weren't full. Actually, staff doctors and nurses were being sent home because there was little for them to do. That's here in England. In America, there's stories out there of doctors and nurses that have been saying that they watched people die. There was They were being Ill, like, um, negligent with these patients. So basically, if you went to hospital, you basically wouldn't come out of there. Why? Because of numbers. In this time bracket, three months, they actually said it would be three months. Who Now, who knows how long a pandemic is going to last? So this was a three-month plan, okay, to get things done, which I think a lot of you know would be the rolling out of the 5G towers. Now, the towers carry a 60 kilohertz frequency, which is the seriously deadly to the human body, okay? Um, It ruins the DNA in the human body and the cells, and you basically you bleed out. People can't breathe. You people have random blood coming through their noses and their ears. I've heard so many stories of this happening, and a lot of people have died. While these towers have been rolled out, there's actually been a a government war all right, going on between light and dark forces. And I will say, happily say, that the light forces are winning. Trump has done some great things. Yes, I said it, Trump is of light force, (laughs) okay? 
do your research, guys. He's of light force, all right? Now, there were um, children that were being held in very dark places um, that were being mistreated, put through fear, and seriously, sadistically being brutalized, all right? Trump went and rescued all these children, and he has them on a ship, and he's healing them, okay? Trump has invested a lot of money in um, medibeds so that anything that's wrong with the human body will be, will be cured once a human body is, lays on this medibed, okay? There's a lot of things that he is doing that is good for the human race, but you must do your research. When people are, when you, when people are saying, oh, Trump um, said this, Trump said that, a lot of what he said has been edited. This is why he says fake news, the media, this, that. He has things that he says because he's been so set up for such a long time. Nobody believed him, but you know what? He fought through and he's still fighting through for, for humanity. And I know it sounds crazy, but all will be all will be revealed in its own time. And I think as well, to, to um, just jump in there as well, is because I believed the Trump narrative for a very long time. I got swept yeah. along with it, you know, because I wasn't, paying that, I wasn't paying that much attention to the news. So the information that I had about him was based on snippets here, things on social media. And of course, they're going to be presenting the worst possible version of him. And I bought it. I, bought yeah. it. I probably even mentioned it on previous episodes and I put my hands up. I bought, I, I bought the lie. And then until I started to really do my research and to kind of ask myself certain questions, it's like, why do I, why do I dislike this man so much? I'm like, I, I need to actually work out why. Because yeah. I, and, and I think this is one of the questions that we need to ask ourselves about everything that we see is, like two questions is like why and where's the money <laughs> so you yeah know, those two things will start to push you towards what the reality of the situation may be and um yeah i had to do a 180 i had to do a completely 180 on the whole right. situation and go oh my god i got played I got played into believing that, that, you know, light was dark and dark was light. But, you know, uh, anyway. I'll yeah, no, exactly the same. You know, it's strange, actually. No, I'll take that back. When he first got elected, I was in L.A. at the time. And I remember my guides telling me, he's good. Feast of Trumpets. His name is Trump, the Feast of Trumpets. He is good. And I remember saying to my auntie and my cousin, he's good. The Feast of Trumpets um, is a Pentecostal um, um, festival, but it's also a Hebrew um, one on the menorah. It's one of the feasts, okay? So it, it's it's a good thing. It's, it's a very powerful um, thing, spiritual thing. And... I knew that he was good, but what happened, they, they portrayed him for so long, so badly, and everyone around me um, was like, no, he's racist, no, he's this, no, he's that, no, he's that. I mean, if you keep hearing that enough, inside me is telling me, no, he's good, but the mind is telling me, mm, same. So I kind of got pulled in, but deep down inside, I always knew that he was good. Um, was I ready to keep saying it? Probably not, because everyone was just so against him and so angry with him, and they a lot of people still are. Um, so they, it call, was they really... call it TDS, don't they? And I mean, it's it's literally yeah. like Pavlov's dog thing. And you've got to think if you have such an immediate visceral reaction to something, then it's not it's not normal. But it, intelligent, worldly people, you only have to say his name and they yes. will explode. And you have to then look at yourself and go, if I can have such a reaction to something, why is it reacting that? There's a part of me that's not clicking on that as well why it's you, you know it's like you 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 ring a bell and suddenly the dog's salivating it's like we've been programmed yes and and for anybody who really wants to kind of look into the um the way that as a majority the society has been programmed against him 
and you use a, a mobile phone, I urge you to look into a guy called Cyrus A. Parser, who mm -hmm. is the AI guy who is part of AI organization. And he will explain how your use of your technology has tailored your mindset yes. to have a physical reaction. Because if you think that you're not, we're all addicted and that we're yeah. programmed into these things. And our, um, and our movements and our likes and dislikes and searches and all the thing are all recorded. Even if you check, the, even if you check the boxes, your stuff is being recorded, and they'll be able to steer you in a particular direction. And this is it's powerful stuff, and it's like outside of what's happening with towers and frequencies. And when we get switched on and go into that level of the story that is set up for us, it's already happening already. So it's before we get you know whatever's going to carry on yeah. yeah it's 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 a con it's a consistent programming mm -hmm. you know even if you watch a tv show the frequency in the music the way it starts programmed you know that's why they're called programs because they are programs and the phone you know you were just talking about the phone and how it reserves all of every all of your information all of your searches i know that i've said a word gone in my emails, lo and behold, I've got an email from such and such and such explaining to me about the word, you know, whatever I, it is that I just said. And I think, hey, like, <laughs> the phone's listening. Yeah, the phone's listening. Everything's listening. The TV, you know, the laptop, Alexa. there's cameras in there. Everything is being monitored. You know, your shopping is being monitored, you know. You know, you're spending, you know, I'm sure everyone knows the fact that every time you use your card, it's, it's being monitored. Even, you know. if you, even if you look at something, because I remember going to, um, when the lockdown first happened, I needed a particular hair thing. And all of the like Afro-Caribbean hair shops were closed down because they were non-essential. It's like, what are you telling the black woman? Well, yeah, right. <laughs> so the only yeah. place that I could get this thing was at Boots. And it was a particular brand of like hair care thing. And I had to like walk far to get to spirits and everything. And in the end, I found another one. And I only like went in the vicinity of mm. this product. But then when I was looking on my Instagram later, I was being shown ads for that particular brand of <laughs> hair care. And I'm like, well, wow. wow. And it's only because I'm like aware of things now. It's like, because I know yeah. I don't follow them on Instagram. I didn't even say the thing out loud. <laughs> I didn't, you know, I didn't, I was on my own shopping, so I didn't even say it out loud. I was just, I looked at it on the shelf. Yeah, they know. So it's, it's they, there, it's there. It's, 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 it's just ludicrous. They know absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we should mention about, they, they put a, 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 something in their phones. Apparently they can call you and they can isolate you. They can put you into isolation. And it's it, it's a it's an that depends app. on one of your upgrades, doesn't it? Really, because I've stopped correct. I've stopped my upgrades. So did I. Yeah, because I knew that that one of the upgrades had it. Yes, and I've I stopped my them. upgrade. Yeah, and then what they do is start making the phone mal malfunction slightly because we haven't upgraded, mm. but we can't. We mustn't upgrade because you're being watched. And I mean, who wants to be watched even more than what we're already being watched? Right? <laughs> Come on, like we've got some human rights. People don't realize that, you know, our rights, we have a lot of say in our rights, but it has to come collectively, you know. And, you know, we can't just, one person can't do the work on their own. You know, it, the, everyone has to come together, and that's what they don't want. And when I say they, I mean the elite. I mean the higher hierarchy, the people that run the world, the banks. I'm talking about the cabal. They don't want unity. They want division. And they will go to all lengths to destroy and divide so they can divide and conquer. It is so important that we don't fall into that trap. But it's happened. Like, look at the trap that got laid for us two weeks ago. Yes. So now the murder of George Floyd. For me, instantly, my guys tell me. So for me, instant red flag. I looked at the video maybe, I don't know, probably 30 times. 
And no, I'm not buying it. You know, Black Lives Matter is funded by, um, if people can just do their research, is funded by George Soros. Mm. He himself said he doesn't care about humanity. Mm. He said it. You can find him saying it on YouTube, okay? Mm. So he funded it, and he, everyone's going around saying Black Lives Matter. Every life matters. Black, if, you know, every life matters. All lives matters. You know, black lives can't matter if every, lives, if every life doesn't matter. Do you, mm. do, do you know what I mean? So mm. that, again, is divide and conquer. That, that was the setup. That is, that is, to me, that's what my guys told me, the George Floyd story, he's not dead. It's a setup. It's planned, okay? And it's to, it's to divide and conquer black against white. Mm. That's what they wanted the old regime that they've been using for as many years as we know to divide and conquer racism. Racism is made up mm. by them. It's mm. an invented inventory, right, that has worked up, up until now. We need to come together and not allow that, that old, very old, invented thing, right, weak thing to work anymore. It cannot work anymore. Mm. You know, and black people, as black people, as a black woman, myself, um, of course, we've been through a lot. Of course, I've ex experienced racism. Of course, I feel like I've not been treated equal at times. But why? Always go for the whys. Go dig deeper, deeper, deeper. Where did it come from? You know, I have friends from all different nationalities, all around the world, all different colours, you know. And at the end of the day, right, where did it come from, right? It's, it's programmes again. They programmed people to dislike other people, um, their brothers and sisters, because that's what we are, because of the colour of their skin, yeah. you know. And we need to under understand that... Mm -hmm. That's weak. It's not strong. It's weak. We need to show them that they're weak by standing together and, and not allowing one, it to work. And this one is the, probably the hardest one at the this moment. Is, yes. uh, the hardest one at the moment for most people to comprehend. Um, because when, when, this, when the thing played out, and I didn't even know whether the event took place or not, but it just seems so timely. It was just yeah. like, it was almost like clockwork. And when you, yeah. and because I've been looking at things and really researching and trying to understand what's going on and you start to, you can never truly understand a criminal mind, but they kind of work in patterns, you know? Yes, they do. And, and you can see a pattern evolving and it just came at a particular time where you just like, man, you know, <laughs> it's like, yeah. wow, you know? And then the, the fallout from it, um, has then, of course, reignited that deep, traumatic yes. in ancestral wound that racism yes. has created within us. And it's a trigger point, again. It it's is. It's a trigger point of all you have to do is see a black man being harmed by yeah. a white person, but even more so a white policeman. Yeah. Then, that's just going to get, because the thing that didn't sit right with me was the way that the information came to me about this event. Yeah. And the way that I learned about it was through um, Instagram. Yeah, I saw it, it on came, Facebook. It, it came through Instagram and it, it flooded my timeline like Same. crazy. It yeah. was like, I'm like, this is just being pushed on me. And I understand events, you know, will kind of jump on and become viral mm -hmm. um but i there was just something that didn't feel right and i spend a lot of time online i work online i do you know so, so yeah so i can feel different like movements and when certain things happen and it just it just seemed like it was really being pushed and i to to be honest i didn't really watch the video because i saw yeah. what it was and i'm like okay and then something about me just went because of certain events that had happened previously in that week that if you don't really follow American politics, you may not be aware of. Yeah. It just seemed that this was like the perfect situation was. to mop up what had gone down, like yeah. a few days before, what had been said, you know, in terms of politics, people, you know. 
Yeah. And um, just in kind of looking at the way that that, and, and the thing is what I've found is the more that I keep looking to try and solidify the fact that this is a factual thing, that I'm not finding anything to it. Like, the more I try and look for the truth that this is a truth, uh -huh. the more I'm finding that this is a falsity. Just learning about the way that things work is another, if people, you know, because I, I understand if you're listening to this, it's like, this seems like really weighty and heavy, but you know, I'm getting to the point that sometimes truth needs to be discussed, we need to. you know, yes. and, and the first time you hear it, it's going to go up against all of your biases. It's like, this is like, what are you saying? Mm -hmm. Where are you coming from? Like, mm -hmm. but it's like urging people to like, maybe this is a possibility to take something like this on, on board that the, the look at what it's created across the world. Look at how yeah. much identical events happened in Spain and in France and Holland, was it? There was another yeah. that happened almost, yeah, everywhere. I'm almost identical. And then up from nowhere, then you have peaceful protests that then gets infiltrated yes. by rioters that are taking, then people are saying, why are there just like blocks of bricks turning up? Yes, in, I saw that. In, mm -hmm. in, you know, and then again, if you look at the money, if you follow the money, if you find out, um, I'm not a big researcher, but I know a few people who have researched, like, who owns mm -hmm. the bricks? If you look at the company that owns the yeah. bricks, mm -hmm. and then manage to deploy the bricks all over America at the same time, I'm, if you yeah. look at the organizations or the companies that were getting looted more so than others, and where they they're trapped. being insu insured for, or where they're earned for as well, um, who owns those companies, it's, 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 it's a play, and it sounds fantastical, to look at this thing and go like no one would ever do something so terrible but unfortunately this is the world that we're seeing and it may feel like a dark thing but it's actually the darkness is rising for us to actually see it encounter it and then be able to transmute it and we have to understand that we do have the power to overcome this but we like you said we have to band together we have to see the games we have to drop the racism story and yes. get the programming out white or black because i've seen the anger and the hurt and the trauma it's created in black people yes. and i've seen the the fear that it's created in white people who want yes. messaging me that they're too you know they want to say something i know dead or they don't want to offend me it's like you know we're, we're people at the end of the day if you yeah. see pictures of like little kids five six seven and you just put a black kid and a white kid together they're gonna play yeah, they're not gonna you know we all bleed we all bleed we all feel and i know we have been through but we're not the only ones mm. you know there's other races that have been through a lot the irish have been through a lot you know there's other every every race has had a story yeah. And with ours, it is, it, it, I know it is, it is very deep because in terms of um, us being taken and not knowing your true identity, I understand all of that. But when does it, where do we end this? You know, how long are we going to, and it isn't us that are carrying it on because we're quite happy to mix with other colours. This, this thing has been instigated to, mm. just, to just go, like you said, just to just to nitpick at that small wound that's in us, you know, just to turn the heat up so that we get angry. And you know, the anger in us is is serious rage. You yeah. know, we, you know, we've had enough of being treated unfairly and all that. Of course, they know this. So you know, these bricks were put there at the protests to so that everyone was kind of locked in a certain areas, and so it would it would really kick off. You know, a lot of the um, shops that were looted were not done by black protesters or protesters mm -hmm. period they were they were protesting peacefully it was people that were undercover you know that weren't pro there to protest they had other agendas you mm -hmm. know and they were the ones that were smashing i heard that protesters were stopping them and saying why who are you, you? Yeah. who are you why are you burning down that shop Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, they were doing it. They were doing it. And, they, and, and protesters were also saying, we're going to get the blame. If you do that, yeah. us protesters are going to get the blame. Why are you doing it? So, mm. again, that's another red flag. Mm. You know, there were so many red flags 
it and also we have if you you know one one thing i was asking people is if like what if the what if the um situation had changed if it would have been a black policeman who'd killed a white man yes. or if it was like white on white crime or black on black crime would it have been as viral would it have been a story no we wouldn't this have heard was, of it no 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 i mean okay for an example um black and black killings they're not on the tv every day and they're higher the rates and the rate is higher okay mm. so why is it that this has gone absolutely i'm not saying r.i.p right i i, I de definitely serious condolences but i don't see why one i mean i guess it was the, t the tipping of the tip of the iceberg um but there's been more since you know mm. as well they're not being put on the news Mm. They've been, they're out, they're coming out into the media, but not as big as that one. I mean, you know, there were three funerals. Um, someone even said they saw him in the crowd. It's been yeah. said, you know. There's a lot of, there, there's, a, there's a lot of inconsistency in terms of, you know, just, just like the, the, what, what is really what I really want people to think about is like we're allowing our trauma and our pain to be weaponized. So in order to overcome this, we need to look at the wound that we need to heal. And maybe this is, I'm listen. I don't know because I, I don't know. We're trying to work it out. We're all trying to work it out. Yeah. What we need to do is realize that this racism thing, it is BS, you know, at the at the core of it, we don't want this. This is not who we are. But it keeps yeah. getting poked all the time, it and as, and we keep intellectualizing black and 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 white and writing books and talking and picking out things as well. It's like maybe we just walk further and go. Do you know what? I'm not going to go there again. And it doesn't mean that tomorrow it's over. It doesn't mean that tomorrow you're not going to meet someone that that kind of puts a stop on you because yeah. You're or doesn't call you something or that doesn't but you've got to then look at them with compassion i feel and yeah. realize that they're still in the program they don't realize that the way that they've been programmed to dislike a black person is part of the program and yeah. you know they they somehow need to be, point it out and instead of retaliating as much as it may hurt is you know this time no, no more times talking about our pain consistently is not going to do it it's low frequency mm. because the thing is we need to all reach a high frequency actually what we're going through now um, um on sp through talking spiritual terms we are actually the, the earth is actually rotating in 5d okay mm -hmm. and we've been living in the 3d for our whole lives basically and we have to go through to the 4d okay which is chaotic to mm -hmm. get to 5d which is peace love and light and right now we're going through the storm to get to the calm and actually donald trump said that about three weeks ago they said how are you and he said going um, in the storm going through the storm is the storm before the calm he said mm. and i thought what do you mean <laughs> this was just before George Floyd, the George Floyd incident, it was like two, two days before. Mm -hmm. He said, this is the storm, this is, it's the storm before the calm, that's what he said. And I, and I kept that there and I thought, what does he mean? Two days later, that happened. I thought, aha. Mm -hmm. So he knew what they were, what the, he knows, he knows what's coming because he's fighting against it. So mm -hmm. their agendas, aren't they? These things have been planned for years. Mm -hmm. All these things have been um, put, put, put down on paper as agendas for years it didn't just appear it, it's all part we're all we're all walking as a part of their plan but not anymore it's about mm. to end it is about to end people and you know what carol um going back to um the george floyd incident um while george floyd we were all watching all of this this, these riots and these protests around the world go on because they, they were protests in countries you never even believe. Yeah. You know, everyone took a stand, which actually, for me, 
I loved it because it showed, it did show unity. It, it showed that their plan actually didn't really work. Mm. You know? yeah, so out of it, a lot of unity came. Yes. You, won't see, you won't see those images, but you will. Yes. If you see the people that were post, posting, they were like yes. sitting down and talking. It was it, amazing. So it's created, even though it, 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 it kind of brought up the pain, I think it got to the point where, one, people have been locked down for two, three months already. So right. you're already going stir crazy. <laughs> then you come in and then you like trigger the, the, the deepest wound possible and everyone goes off. You know, suddenly like quarantine doesn't matter and we're all out neck to neck and it, right? Magic, right? <laughs> yeah, <they're> right. <laughs> and it, so so that goes out the window. But then after a while I think people are just like, hang on a minute. You know what I mean? It's like this what? Yeah doesn't 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 make any sense it's, it's a nonsense in itself and, and so there's a lot of there is a lot of people looking at each other and people being accountable in their own way you know and it's going to be yeah. easy and people are going to get triggered and go you're not doing it right just at least make an effort try and do it in whatever way and, mm -hmm. and fumble through because usually what we do particularly when it comes to something as like triggering and as as gen as as, as like incendiary as racism everyone just kind of like oh i'll do a little bit and I'll, I'll i'll do a thing and then i'll go back and we will pretend it's gone it's like no we need to get in the muck and dirt of it right now yes. and just clean this one out for once yeah. and for all because like you said moving forward things are better but you're not going to get to that side if you don't deal with the dark let's speak a little bit more about um black lives matter and the whole situation behind that because obviously the words sound good and everyone's really into what they feel black lives matter is about and what it represents and not fully understanding that things are not what they seem and who is really really behind it and you know why we should take a bit of caution especially when we're we're taking up a, a cause or a social media hashtag or a, a position of, of things just just speak on that for a moment Okay, um, I, as you know, I do my research. Um, I get everything, mostly downloads from my guides. Um, Black Lives Matter, the actual um, organisation, um, sounds, sounds amazing, you know, for our community to have such a strong you know, um, organisation that um, that we can stand, stand behind, you know. But the truth of the matter is um, it's not actually that straightforward, as is not many things. Black Lives Matter is actually run, well, it's actually, let me change that, funded by a man called George Soros. So it's very important that everything is researched, you know, and everything, there's always something behind something, the thing, you know, and don't just, it's important to just not, don't be spoon fed, you know, don't allow anyone to spoon feed. You know, we've been, we've been, we are allowing that to happen all our lives. And it's really key now that we change this habit. Um, the fact that this organisation, Black Lives Matter, is funded by this um, by this man, George Soros, is a very massive thing. There's a very um, meaningful plan behind this, and it's another way to control. And while you know the black community. Uh, around with banners saying Black Lives Matter. I understand it because obviously I'm a black woman and I get it and we're fighting for what, you know, we we deserve actually because what we've been through is is really bad. But, you know, the race thing is just an in invention created by the hierarchy and... Um, this this organization was created for us to fight come up against each other in terms of color and it's not it's not the case we have a much bigger problem and it isn't 
race. It really isn't. And in time, I'm actually can't wait for that to happen. All will all will come to light, you know. And the the battle that we're in, we're actually in a spiritual war. You know, this it's not a race war, it's a spiritual war. And that's what people don't understand. It's very important that people go out on their computers or their devices and they look up the name George Soros and they will get a lot of information. It's very important. You've got to check people's affiliations yes. because the company you keep is always key and it's nigh on impossible to have company of a certain caliber and not get drawn into what their mindset and their practice and their agenda is. It's, it's nigh on impossible to do to do so um another thing as well um, you know i i remember on the day that um on the tuesday how there was this real real kind of move for everyone to be um posting black squares on yeah. their on their social media and i really felt an aversion to do that and Sorry. One, I didn't really, one, I didn't do it because everyone was doing it. So that's just like me going, I'm not going down that way. I didn't realize there was a deeper significance to the black square. Mm -hmm. You know, that black square, um, if I'm pretty sure that if we trace who invented the idea, the source will not be pure. Um, it's, it's, it came across to me very ritualistic. Um, not in a good way, in a very um, compromising way. Um, again, having the black community acting like sheep, you know. Um, this was not invented by um, us. It, 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 somewhere along the line, it was put there and then someone ran with it into the community and next thing you know, everyone was doing that black in their screens not only that the other bit that got to me which was very disturbing for me actually was the slogan i can't breathe um and as we know that is what um george floyd was saying when he was um being detained um, and arrested by the police now if we look at this thing in a deeper way right spiritually um if you're saying I can't breathe, I can't breathe, you know. You're actually sending that signal out to the universe saying that you can't breathe. And, you know, everyone's lying on the floor saying they can't breathe. That energy, that collective energy going up to the universe is bad, seriously bad, because literally you're saying you're dead. And it's loads of black people doing it, loads, not just black, Every race was doing it, you know. And again, I'll say that it was beautiful. It's been beautiful to see the unity in colour standing up for, you know, what what's in, what's going on with the, with the black men being arrested and killed. So you know, but people get up, don't lie down on the floor and say you can't breathe. Yes, you can breathe. You know, you're breathing and you're going to breathe for a long time. Don't send that signal to the universe. It's got to stop. When you say things, especially when it begins with with the with I, you know, as in I am, you know, the, the the infinite and the source. When you say I can't breathe, that's an affirmation. You know, it is an affirmation, and I just don't think people realise. And that's why, you know, I really wanted to to touch on that. And, um, and also, you know, I saw people who were protesting with I Can't Breathe written on the masks over their faces. Right. That's bad. Very serious. Because you see the wearing of the mask. A mask is not going to stop you from catching a virus. A virus is direct contact through fluids of the body, like probably kissing, sharing the same, just like the flu, exactly the same. When we catch the flu, do we walk around with masks? No. You know, it's, it's, it's berserk, actually. And it's also subliminal, spiritually. You're basically walking around with a mask. It's a, it's, it's a representation of the fact that you can't breathe and you're being silenced. 
Because that's that's what you're doing. When you wear it, it's like you've got no mouth. At all no all no nose. So you can't breathe and you can't speak. Yes, you can speak. Speak up, breathe, take all that back, those affirmations. You know, cancel them and take it back. Don't do it. Can I just also, Carol, touch on um the kneeling that 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 took place? Um, that's actually a messianic symbol, the the kneeling. Um, and again, it's subliminal and that that and ritualistic, and that sig- that signal goes up to the universe as though you're bowing down to someone. And although the meaning and the reasons why people have done it is close to their hearts, and I get it, but we've got to look at the bigger picture always. You know, that is not good energy, you know. That's why that's that I won't I would never be doing that. You know, I'm again I'm that I can't agree with. With all of this going on, how can people start to work on healing themselves? Because even like you're saying, like you're saying, when all of this was going and we were all looking at this thing, we were being distracted from what was happening behind right. the scenes. Exactly. So, you know, that's a complete other narrative. And there's so many other things that are happening right now that are good, even though we're looking at this murderous racism, uh-huh. fighting and, and uh-huh. traumatic event. There are things that are actually, justice is being served behind yes. us, even yes. though we don't know. But yet, how do people start to work on their healing to get themselves stronger so that when the truth of all the justices that are being done start to come to light? Because it's going to be, again, that's going to be, I think, you know, when, when the deeper truths start to come out, racism is going to seem like a walk in the park. It in terms is going of to, going to as, as crazy as that might sound, that you'll be like, man, I wish all we had to deal with was racism. As yeah. painful as that seems. Yeah, people are in for a rude awakening because yeah. there's so much that is going to change in such a swift time. It's going to mm-hmm. be swift. And it's even said, I think it was Cobra, he said, well, everyone cannot wake up and reach that frequency at the same time. It's mm-hmm. too much. So he said that it will have to be done in stages. Um, Some are already um, vibrating at a very high frequency. Some are waking up. I've noticed a lot of people that are now saying, okay, this COVID, all of a sudden, it doesn't even, it feels surreal. Did it really happen? Like, you know, hang on a minute. I think that was fake. Uh, Mm -hmm. People keep saying that doesn't, it doesn't feel like it was a pandemic. It shouldn't have been a pandemic. Mm-hmm. And people are questioning. And a lot of people, I would say probably, it's probably a good 60%. We're on about 60% of people are now saying, uh, hang on a minute, red flag. You know, whereas before, I was called crazy you know, because we were, we, we were the minority that, that knew and could were able to tap in and pick up and research and know the truth. But now people are being pushed into it. Right? In terms of um, what was happening behind the scenes, right, the reason why people are in for a rude awakening is because the information that's about to come out is absolutely shocking. Mm-hmm. Um, people need to um, follow something called Q, right? Um, you know about the Q, right? Yeah. Carol. And the thing is, I, you know, I don't even know if... Because Q can be quite cryptic. And I really yeah. kind of got into understanding who uh, stroke what or where. Q, you know, there's, there's many different... Um, yeah philosophies of like who and what and where yeah. Q is whether Q is like you know let's let's talk it as it whether Q is like fully human military yeah, yeah. extra planetary as well yeah. and as as fantastic as all of these things sound we need mm-hmm. to start also opening our mindset to the fact that we are not as human beings all that there is and of course also, and also taking on board that we are not all that there is Mm-hmm. And all of the and the aliens or ETs are not the enemy. Get that. We'll They're not. 
Independence Day coming to break us down as as well. That that is not the case. So that should anything happen, and little bits of disclosure have met the mainstream media already to be like, yeah. oh, actually we did see UFO. So they've given you a tiny. Mm-hmm. So yes. the fact that little bits are being dripped in at a slow level, doing it showing slow. you is that they're just kind of like gently pouring the warm water into the cold water yeah. so that you can be sitting in the truth when it comes out. But the, if anything, I can say to anyone is research and do not be scared. Do not fear. Yeah. Do fear not fear. fear is, is, is the worst vibration that you can sit in. Yeah. You know, and if anyone... I always say, if anyone's fearful, um, meditate. Just keep meditating that out, you know. Mm -hmm. A lot of meditation. There's lots that you can listen to to combat fear. And just know, right, because I know for a fact I'm a a psychic medium and I've seen what is going on, what's coming, okay. Just know that it is of light, Yeah. all right. It's going to be better. I promise you, it is going to be better. Um, money's going to change. Yeah. Okay. People that are sitting there hungry, there's going to be no more of that. It's going to be more equal. Money's going to be spread out so that everyone can eat. Mm-hmm. You know, um, there is other species. Mm-hmm. There is um, extraterrestrials. There is. Um, do they are they are they on earth or do they come to earth yes yes they do these things have been hidden from us for a long time there's a lot of things that have been hidden that are actually coming out now the information is out there if you search for it um with ets there's um different races of ets um aliens um it's a good idea to definitely research it um, we carry as human beings a small percentage of reptilian um, in our brain. We are um, like a mixed species. Um, you know, we're not the only species that's ever been on Earth. Before us, there was dinosaurs. Before that, there was. You know what I mean? So it makes sense if you do it. Lo- if you think logically, it makes sense. You know, human like what is that you know it, it, that's what we are human so you know it's it's really important for everyone to be very open-minded and let that information trickle in and if you need to take it in slowly it's fine but make sure you know that you know it's very important for everyone to access um information that inf- if the information is out there it mm-hmm. is there they're not hiding it they're not withholding it you can find absolutely anything you want if you search for it you know and right now as we're in the 4d the planet is now is in 5d but everyone's basically in 4d and that's why it's like this but it is simmering down between now and summer of next year we'll be seeing massive changes. Mm -hmm. There will be massive changes, yeah. And I was just, you know, from just knowing things that have happened on a a financial level and also then it's it's all about just being... what, What I'll say is I think we can't imagine the possibility because our mindset has been so narrowed in terms of the view of what being what having a life and being a human being on planet earth is about you know it's this kind of you just you work you you work you sleep you 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 go on holiday you come back and you live your life and then you drop off but life can be so different and the possibilities for life to be so different that we ever imagined all of these things already exist as yes. it, as, but we can't comprehend of it because we without the things that we have we're like well there's nothing so we go yeah. into fear but it's just that we're not we're not we're not able to if you have the information then it's something that you know that we can lean into things like you know imagine you know just go into imagination if you can't do anything else mm-hmm. what it would be like if there needn't be any sick people on the face of the planet if right. there's a cure for everything every yeah imagine if those it existed already and then you think well why do you think those cures do not exist already what what makes you think they don't exist they do. because we've been told these cures have existed for anything yes and it's hard as somebody who's lost a lot of people knowing that 
most of them could have been saved had it had these um cures or sometimes medications or processes being available to them i wouldn't have been talking about certain people in the in the yeah. you know so yeah. so that's that is again that will be heart rendering for people when they realize what has been held from them technology the yes. technology that we think we have today as good as it is we're so behind yes on what is available and what is possible as well yes um, in terms of you know the way that we can move around the planet that's going to be completely it's be, yeah. we can't even imagine of it because it sounds like science fiction but the the way that things get dripped into our uh, our mentality into our into our sphere is through is through the fiction is through the movies and there's you know yes. it's, it's laid out there like you said the information is there should you choose to look at it and it may feel scary and unbelievable but in, we we need to alert and educate ourselves to these things and heal ourselves of things in order for us to be able to step into that. And then when it comes to the financial situation, that's just going to blow people's minds again. You know, yeah. you can't even you can't even can't even because it sounds so ridiculous because we've been brought into a, a slave a slave since society. We can't call it anything other than what it is, really. Right, right, yeah. And the thing is, there's going to be. The 5G will be quantum. Mm -hmm. They're going to use um, Tesla, Nikola's Tesla. So there won't be any, none of that radiation to worry about, you know. And, you know, people that are worried about 5G, they don't be. Don't worry about things that are not here yet. Yeah. Okay. It's not, it's not, it's not here yet. People think it is. It's here, but it's not fully active 100 percent. all right but it is out there and it's been hurting people but you see if they was to turn that on everywhere could you imagine but that's not going to happen right um the the in, ter in terms of the, the transportation mm. they're building cars that will need no drivers you know that's that's how and that's going to run on quantum as yeah, well we it's going to be fuel. amazing yeah, all for no more fuel, none of that pollution, you know. But this, but this technology has been around for 50, 60 years. It has. It it's has, not, but they, just never, they never used it. Because, it, you know, it's free. Yeah, they never <laughs> used it. They wanted our money. So, you know, now let's just charge them some more money as, as though they haven't got enough. You know, it's, it's like, what, how much more do you want, you know? <laughs> what are you going to do with it you know i think oh, that's, 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 i think <laughs> i think that's i think that's probably what's one of the most confusing things is because we don't operate on those criminal levels yeah. you know and like for most people what do you want you want to have you want to have work that's fulfilling you want to have a yes. nice home a nice family nice yes. friends have the freedom to know that everything's just good and okay and that's okay for you that's yes. okay that's a nice life that's what most people like yeah. but then there there are there are quote unquote people who that ain't enough they Literally need to it. have all and complete control of everything oh, i don't no. i don't understand it i do not get no, it because no, i'm no. like if if you've got all the power then how much what where else is there to go i that one it trips me out i just don't get it it's like it how much how much do you need to feel better or what it, more do you need to do to feel better what's happened is become power it's it's it then becomes it's like it goes it, it it's the money then it goes from the money to the power of having that amount of money then it's what can i do with this amount of money actually i've got everything i'm bored oh let's just create a virus let's 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 control everyone you know that is it really because they're bored and there's no, they've got all the money it's pure evil you know but dismantle them and they'll wish they had the normal things <laughs> they're all going to jail <laughs> They are going to jail. They're going to be named and shamed mm. and go to jail. And I think um, that's going to be as well. Again, these are shocking. things that, just, that sound like fairy tales, but you know, history that's will tell. <laughs> history will tell because it's when when the truth comes out and when we really truly 
get to understand the way that our society has been structured there's yes. going to be a lot of heartbreak because we've put a lot of uh energy and uh sovereignty into people who didn't necessarily deserve it and they, they, deserve. And, they and they were put in positions to actually lead us astray and yeah. suppress us and keep us from our power and learning who those individuals are it's going to be it's going to be hard it's going to be a massive betrayal for on so many different corners you know yeah i think i worry more for the elderly people that um in england because they're about to receive a very big shock okay <laughs> they really are and these are very 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 patriotic people you know and it's all they've known you know, and they're in for a rude awakening. And it's like, you know, I always felt something there, to be honest, um, that wasn't right. I did my research because um, obviously I said I know the Bible inside out. So um, in there, just the person that wrote that, you know, King James, you know, he, he was royalty, you know, and suddenly it just kind of took a turn. So without telling people too much <laughs> i'll allow people to wake up to that one slowly yeah. because it, it, that one's going to be shocking that's a massive one and it's actually happening as we speak i just wanted to also touch on uh, the bible as i have explained i i grew up as a in the christian church and was baptized a pentecostal and um walked as a prophetess i am a prophetess um, and now the most high uses me in many ways which he says is fine for me. And I help many people through his power or her power, the source power. Now, the Bible, I just wanted to touch on this because this is very important. When, if we go back to slavery, when um, we were captive, captive, I mean, really captive, there was no freedom. It was on the Sunday that, Slaves were dressed up because they were when they were shown off shown off in the church when when the slave traders and slave masters went to church, and they gave us the Bible to read, and this was allowed by them. This the only thing that we was allowed to read. My question has always been, why is it that you that the slave traders slave masters killed you, lynched you? punished you if they caught you reading or writing if you were trying to learn those things you were you were you were, you were in serious trouble but they allowed you to read the bible so that was my question if you're not going to allow uh, uh, me to read this or learn to do that but you're going to allow me the bible question it why 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 the bible okay and for me the Bible has been turned, twist, translated, transliterated. It's also been tampered with, all right? And it's been used for so long as a control tool. Now, question everything. Question absolutely everything. Everything that is happening in the world is going according to the Bible because they are making sure it does. It's basically like a handbook. That's what I was told by the Most High. If you want connection with the Most High, you have to build the relationship directly. It's very important. Every, every one of us have got our own personal connection with the Most High. So it's important to use your intuition. When you're reading the Bible, take bits, use your intuition, and and if it doesn't add up, you have to question it. Do you think going forward, you know, as as we go into this new, we ascend into a new dimension, into a new way of living, that we will need to have figureheads like presidents or, or sovereigns or, or anything like that? Do you have faith that we can govern ourselves? I feel at this precise moment while people are in the 4D state, I would say not 
but we have been doing it to be fair Mm. um kind of people stayed in quarantine but what didn't make the move they you know to question things they just Mm. did it okay so um i feel that we kind of can do it if we but if if everyone collectively, collectively, there's going there's going to be, have to be a, a, some kind of leader. I feel um, just to bring back that, that the group, the whole the whole place, the whole universe. Universe, I'm saying, well, it is because there's other planets, right, and there is life there. So yeah, we are going to need people to govern, um, but I don't know if it needs to be as heavy as it is. Um, I actually also feel that in our community, there needs to be some inside work done in terms with our youth. Um, I feel as though um, there's still cracks um, in our community. I believe that we will vibrate immensely if we fix those cracks. And those are things that have been programmed, proposed programs that have been put into our community as well and um, uh, every community has been programmed but I'm talking about um, the black community right now Mm. Um, there's too much there's still a lot of black and black crime you know and we need to cut that program you Mm. know it needs it's it's ridiculous like we're killing our own and yeah. it, the, the rate is astronomical. It, well, it, it came in. It came in from. Um, I'm going to keep names out of it, but yeah, there there was there was someone who talked about they were. This is like late eighties, early nineties, LA, mm-hmm. and there was this meeting that mm-hmm. um, they were invited to. The all kind of the people, the music people yeah. that were invited to, you know about yeah, this. One, I know what you mean. Yeah, where where they were, let's say after the meeting, gangster rap just went. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then yeah. suddenly, it the whole mood changed. Yeah. So like a, an agreement was made, or like you know, people were invited in to kind of be part of something, and yeah. then the whole mood of what the output was and the messaging because if you you know i'm sure clear as day anyone can be you know anyone who's of an age can you know can remember like remember when music used to sound so different you know yeah four three two kilohertz yeah they and, changed and the frequency. they changed it to 440 but That's also right. then when if you if you just look at the content of how music was like up until late 80s anyway those yes. you just listen to that that decade yeah. of music when that was kind of the last decade when it was yeah. completely clear beautiful yeah until then we went into 90s and then where we're at now and as a musician i can hear it yeah so little of so little of what is available musically is played yes. you know yes. there, there are and i know we've got something like the 12 bar blues and jazz is based on uh-huh. things but that even when you're playing like blues and jazz and things like that you have people coming in musicians who are skilled that will improvise on top of a structure yeah. that although it sounds the same these tunes sound very different so you uh-huh. won't know unless you know but then there is a format of four chords uh-huh. three or four chords that I could, you know, I could go and list maybe like 50 or 60 songs that are written on there and they come yes. out and they're the same one, different, different artists, different things, but it's the same kind of, and, and knowing yeah. like music and knowing yeah. chords and dissonance and, and, and uh-huh. songs are very basic and they don't have that, they don't have that and extra that- and that flavor in them that if you listen to a jazz piece or if you listen to one of the people that I've always really liked, her musicality and her band has been Anita Baker because of the musicality that is based. If you listen to that music and you can hear every single one of the players in that band just pouring in just sweet mm-hmm. stuff, you know, beautiful things. And then if you listen to modern music and the way that that's produced there's not the musicality there anymore 
and it then doesn't it doesn't kind of tingle you in the same way because no. sometimes you listen to certain things and you're like oh you know yeah. you, might, you might as well be sliding into bed or a warm bath right now <laughs> you listen to something and you 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 want to you want to punch somebody yeah i don't like it. it gives me a headache i can't listen to any of it it's just horrendous the words and then there's this voice that they put in it, like a robotic voice. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, that sounds demonic. I'm not turning it off. You know, it's, it's, they, they infiltrated the music industry mm. massively. And music is a way of life, you know, mm-hmm. for us humans. You know, that's how we, we deal with our emotions and our memories and, Absolutely everything, you know, is music. So they definitely destroyed that for a very long time. Yeah. But um, that is changing. That yeah. I've, I'm seeing some change there. More, more and more people are making music to 432 kilohertz, which is of love, um, um, the infinite. Um, and the 440 is going out the window now. Nobody wants it, you know. Some do, but I believe that that is what's ticking our, our our youth yeah. and making them this kind of very very boisterous and angry you know and because mm. it know. is it is a you know anyone who listens to like you said solfeggio uh, um mm-hmm. frequencies as well yeah. but then or listens to mantra or meditation music or anything like that these have got a frequency around it yes. like instantly bring you into a state we and have the, same, to the same is with the music and if not for yourself if you do have youth around you just also be cautious of what they're listening to or if you can't completely take them away from the dark music then maybe you know just play you know like kind of like get some get them on some vintage tips as well just to kind of balance it out you know and try yeah. to try to erase as these things are slowly being pulled out because it's like you you can see and feel and then the imaging is so strong and the, you know yeah. symbolism that's a completely different a two hour long conversation it's in really itself you know, but, yeah, yeah. but but these are the things that the like you say the information is there for us to educate and be clear of ourselves now so that we can see these things when they come up and it and it's meant to incite a certain reaction it'll be like Oh, oh, you're trying that game again. It's like, oh, I know that one. Like, nice, nicely played. But, you know, I, <laughs> I can see, I can see what you're trying to do here now. We're wising up to it. And it's just, yeah. it's just getting everybody wiser. Yeah, it is. And you know what? You know, I want to add to what you just said. So you're 100% right. Frequency is key, you know, to the way we be- to behavior because the subconscious, it goes into the subconscious and that's what con- how we conduct our behavior. Yeah. through our feelings, emotions, and um, it being, um, the music being so hard, um, and, and these youths, they're playing it when they're asleep. You see, to play music or have the TV on while you're asleep is so bad because your, your subconscious, your inner being is taking all of that frequency and, and all of that information, the words, you know, ever listen to a song and wake up in the morning and you're singing it for the whole yeah. day because you've mm-hmm. listened to that all night. You know, what I always say to my, to my clients is play a 432 kilohertz frequency while you're asleep. Your mood will change, you know, but, you know, at the moment, not everyone's doing that, you know, but it, yeah, 100%, you know, it's so important, that frequency, and we need to look after our youth. They are the future, and a lot of them are not making it past 20, and it's, it's I'm so saddened by it, you know. Um, I lost I lost my brother to black and black crime mm. um, in the year 2000, mm. so I have a really strong... Um, feeling and, and a work to do, you know, to get these years. And the thing is, it's hard to talk to them. You know, they, they're just in a space where they don't want to speak to their elders in an, in an appropriate way, the way that we were raised. I know me, I was raised, if I didn't speak properly to an elder, I would be in trouble, serious trouble, you know. So um, we need to kind of get them back in that place so i mean even if we kind of have some parenting groups Mm because some parents 
find it hard because, like I said, you know, we were raised by the Windrush, and they they were just they were just came to England, and they didn't know what they they tried their best, and they did their best, you know. Mm. But you know, it, it, our generation was basically kind of the specimen, <laughs> <laughs> you know, off of yeah. the Windrush. You see, and it's very important that we instill these old traditions from our ancestors in the children so that there's respect, you mm. know, and there's they walk the street with, with a, a yearning to succeed and they mm. don't think of themselves of no, as nothing and end up on the streets selling drugs and doing them and stuff like that. We're losing a lot of our youth and these things have to be fixed within the community. So I would say we definitely need a leader um, or a patron um, in the black community. I know there's people doing things. There's definitely people, I've met some people that are doing things, but I think it should be collective because yeah. one person can't do such a big work on their own. You know, mm. it needs to be collected. And that's the, that will be the beginning of something huge and great for our people. Yeah, yeah, you know? no, that's necessary. I'm, I'm seeing from from different sides of the Atlantic people that are coming forward and one who are very much about just telling the story of what is going on so waking people up that way yes. and everyone's got their different methods you know so, yes. so they will they will kind of resonate with a different uh -huh. demographic which is great as well great. Yeah. um but then the next step is to like you say band together and work out some sort of way of healing and just allow yeah. and then also allow it to be messy you know this I think we're trying to get it right the first time and we're yeah. trying to undo a, a system that's been in place for longer than many yeah. of us have been alive so just know that we're going towards the same thing let people kick and scream and and yes. do all the messy bits that it, that it is but know that we're you know and don't fall yeah. back into the it's not working it can't work because this is one thing that i heard from a couple of black women on and um was oh it's you know it's something we'll never heal from i'm like oh, what no. that no no no, no 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 that's, no no that you can't have that and it's it's not the first time i've heard it from a from a woman oh, oh we shall overcome convince themselves that racism that is something that we can't heal from no, and it's we will. up until this point it hasn't been healed but that's not to say that it, it won't be and yeah. in, in order for us to move into the way that the world is is going we can't take any of these wounds with us. They will be the things that will stop us moving forward. We have yes. to let them go. We and as to. justified and as right as we can all tell our stories of how we suffered from racism, how mm -hmm. we were pushed back because of certain things people called us, you know, the, 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 yeah. the people that we have lost to this, this racism system. Yeah. We have to get past that and forgive yeah. and understand that it wasn't us that created it, but we yeah. were programmed to perpetuate it. Right, right. That's the important thing because a lot of people don't realise that, mm. you see. They don't realise, that you know, actually that person was programmed. That person's acting out of the programme, you know. Yeah. People don't realise that. And it, that it's, it's a knowing, but it's getting everyone together and saying, listen... You've been programmed. Mm -hmm. This is how it's been. This is what happened. This is what they've done. Are we going to be it or are we going to beat it? You know, mm -hmm. and we, we will beat it. And, you know, I've definitely seen um, throughout these protests, if nothing else, I've seen unity amongst all colours. It yeah. didn't work. <laughs> yeah. Their agenda failed. It didn't work. Mm -hmm. And that, that I loved to see everyone protesting you know you know everyone was coming out and saying no that was wrong they didn't expect that no you know they just thought we would go crazy and be everyone that we saw that was white and then mm. the white people white supremacy would ta retaliate and then they would um then there'd be an all-out war black against mm. white that didn't happen that's and that's not gonna happen because we know better Mm. Right, we know better. We have to know better and keep mm. spreading it, you know, and letting people know. Come on, we are all one in this thing, you know. We've been put here together to live together. Doesn't for matter reason. about yeah. for a reason. Doesn't yeah. matter about colour. 
Yeah. yeah no. And I think it's just bring it's taking it back to that. Remember, you're a supreme being, and you didn't yes. choose to come here to like live in a world of pain. The reason that all of this has been uncovered now, and we have technology as basic as the technology is, that is allowing us to access the truth and at least connect with each other while we're in semi quarantine or depending on what your <laughs> what your situation <laughs> is doing there there is light at the end of the tunnel but also 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 is whatever happens going forward remember there is a lot of visuals and false situations at play which is antagonizing yeah. people and it's yeah. based on power it's a power struggle that has got more to do with the power and who's in control as opposed to our individual needs because these right. people don't really consider us to be any of any use to us as individuals no. for sure they do oh no they and don't it's just things may look like they're getting worse and the play may look like it's getting worse and the, the there might be another attack or another event yeah. or there might be aliens might come out of the sky or you know, and something else know that yeah. something else is coming oh but yeah. know that technology is such to the extent that things can be made to look like what they are not even if you are walking down the street and looking at the sky yeah there's holograms, holograms and there's there's things up there that don't look like it that that <laughs> may look one way that, that are not you know you've got to think imagine yeah. for an instance that the sky would be the perfect projection screen mm -hmm. yes. and just you know and again just in, in invite people to just do your research so that you don't get scared when things yeah. look like a certain thing because then when you see it and you've got a bit of information that relates to that then it will be like oh this is what it, and it looks so because it will probably look real as hell yes it, it, because they know they've worked on this thing for years, so yeah. they've mastered they've mastered it all. You know everything looking as real as possible to the mind, because the mind mm. is actually our mind is powerful, but it's so but it's been used against us. So me personally, I don't use my mind. I go with my spirit. You know, but that's how I teach my clients. You know how to use their their spirit. The gut mm. feeling, use your chakras, do not use your mind because your mind will send you all over the place, you know, and they, the mind has been programmed and it keeps being programmed and you need to know when something isn't good for your mind, you know, don't watch it. If something doesn't, don't listen to it. You know, these things will put you in a state that they have planned to put you in. So, um, I wanted to touch on um, the actual um, trauma, how how to deal with trauma and fear a little bit yeah. more. Please. Um, yeah. Trauma is something that you experience, the spirit, the human being exp comes to, reaches when they've been through multiple difficult things in their life and it's been put to the back and you may say i'm fine i'm fine i'm fine but you're not fine because it's still there and if that trauma is not dealt with you can't move forward it, it acts as a block so you can't reach your highest self because that trauma hasn't been dealt with it's like i always call it the back burner you've got the cooker going you finished cooking on the front, but the two back burners are still on, on low. Very, very low. They're, they're, you can barely see they're on, but they're still going. That's your subconscious, and the front is your conscious, yeah? So we need to clear, finish the back to get the best results so you reach your higher self and your, your higher consciousness. So... There's there's a there's a there's a program that I do um, with dealing with trauma, also dealing with childhood trauma because whatever you go through as a child will definitely reach you as, and follow you and affect you as an adult. So um, we go right back to your childhood state and we deal with as far back as you can remember, and then. We deal from it there and then come, and then you come right the way up to where you are now. 
And by the time you reach to where you are now, you will be healed. You will be healed. And you, that healing will just keep healing. It's, it's a process. And you then reach a place, which is where I am. It's taken many years. Um, where you embrace that trauma that you went through because you know that if you didn't go through these things, you wouldn't be that strong individual where you are now. You know, and once you reach that place, you basically become invincible. You're active, you're acting in your higher self and not the self that they want you to be in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, I do, I do do quite a lot of that because I, I did it for myself and that mm. was very, very successful. Um, and so, it's, and yeah. it's important work and, and, you know, I think, I think that that's the hard thing for people to do is go and look at those shadows and deal with how they need to come up. And yeah. I'm noticing that people, I'm, I'm seeing people struggle at the moment as well, even within the spiritual community where we yeah. have these practices. But what this time is really unveiling is who has actually really done the work or has yeah. used their practice to just bypass situations. We, we can't bypass anything right now because the, the, it's all coming up from, from the darkest corners in the world and within ourselves. Yeah. So in order for us to go forward, we have to deal with it and we can't keep hiding from it because it's just going to keep popping up in different corners and you'll find the more talking from experience the more that you're able to really dig into those real painful things and and face them and cry out and get confused and and uh -huh. fall on the floor and be in the darkest darkest spots yeah. and then you get to the point of actually do you know what it's made me more resilient it's made me like you say invincible and then the, the 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 hardest one probably is then to be able if it is someone that has done something to you that's caused that pain be able to understand them and forgive them and even thank them for the wrong yes. they paid yes in creating that situation for you yeah i i just embrace everything i went through and i've been through a lot mm. you know people that know me are like i don't know how you're still standing and how you and I'm like, I don't, but I do now. You know, I do now. I didn't before because I was in trauma, you know, going through the motions. But now that I have actually made it through, oh. um, yeah, um, yeah, I know, I know that, you know, it was, it was, anyone can make it through. If I can make it through, yeah anyone absolutely everyone will make it through and the thing is if it's not dealt with you you can't you'll get stuck in the 4d you can't vibrate at the five at the 5d at the five, fifth dimension you can't unless those things are addressed so it's very important that it's dealt with i've got some people that i'm doing it with at the moment it's funny because they've started people have started coming for that that one, that particular thing, rather than the other things um, at the moment. So that's definitely mm -hmm. the universe, you know, sending them forward to get that healing for that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it must be done. Yeah. And it's freedom on the other side. It's, it's freedom on the other side of, of it and, and, and knowing yourself from a different position. You know, yeah. It's, it's just coming back into a stronger clearer version of yourself that you can it's it's just available on the other side and honestly going through it is painful yeah but it's, it's the journey the journey is worth it and it can't kill you it can no. staying in yeah. the pain will cause more pain that's right but moving forward will will create a different version of you that is unbelievable it's amazing you know you wake up every day so much gratitude for being awake and alive. You know, this is a great time to be alive, actually, and to witness and be involved in all these things and changes that are happening. Mm. People may feel that they're feeling a lot of fear. There's a lot of people that are carrying so much fear that they're not actually realizing that they're in a part, they're a part of history. You yeah. know, this is historical, what yeah. is happening. You people know, will and talk about this for, 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 for centuries to come. Yes, anyone we will. 
anyone who knows you, like, you know, they'll be coming back to you like 50, 60 years going, Grandma, <laughs> what happened? Where yes. were you? And, you know, you'll be able to tell it. Because, but we're yeah. in the center of it now. And it feels like the worst thing. But this is, this is the collective yes. uncovering of the wound. And then yes. it's, it's, it, it feels messy, but, you know, it's... It's, it's a rebirth. We're all, being re it's a, we're all in the middle of birth. It's rebirth. We're being reborn into a new time, the golden age. Yeah. You know, this is Imagine the golden it. age. It's going to be beautiful. It is. So just push through. We're just going to push through. We're doing it. <laughs> it's going to be all good. And, and gonna Lee, I'm going to ask you these her conversation questions as well, because I like to hear. Okay. So, so the first one I always ask my female guests, well, all of my guests have been female up until this point, even though I'm realizing I'm, I'm going to make some changes at some point as well. So I'm not just yeah. in her being about the woman. So let that be known. Anyway, yeah. so what was the best piece of advice a woman has ever given to you? Okay. Um, I would say my mother is my mother. I've got two people, my mother and my auntie. Mm -hmm. My aunt in LA, I'm very close to, right? Um, she said, always be yourself and always live your truth. And there is only one infinite one, only one God. And she believed me when no one else did. When everyone thought I was going cuckoo, when I, that was me being awakened. <laughs> she, she, she just completely understood, you know. So she said, live your truth. Always live your truth. And there is only one God. And just always live your truth. Don't let anyone um, take you away from living your own truth. Mm. Um. And my mother said, which always sticks with me, is never ever watch what someone has because you don't know what they've done to get it. <laughs> As of, and to this day, I'm just like that. I haven't got time to be watching people or what they're doing or be envious of this person because everyone's got their own journey, right? And we're all individual and we're all important and we're all the, a part of that big jigsaw, you know. So I don't have time to watch other people. I have to concentrate on myself, you know, and not be envious and not nothing. Just I have to concentrate on my journey, my life purpose. Very important to me. Amazing. And... Maybe a controversial question. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've had loads of those. <laughs> anyway, um, so what woman represents higher energetic resonance to you? Okay. Okay, right. I had a few. I had, I had one, but that's no longer they. <laughs> because I've, I've obviously, I know some stuff and mm. I cannot put that person on that, in that place. I'm going to say the spirit hmm. i'm gonna say the spirit because the great spirit people call it the holy spirit or the you know that spirit is a feminine spirit hmm. and i'm gonna go with that because that's where i go for everything hmm. i don't go to a female woman um for anything you know I long, long on those days. <laughs> and it kind you of know. ties into what you said before of like, you know, just you never know what someone has done to get the things that they got. Right. You know, that's right. So, you know, I just, I have my own way of thinking and my own way of living. So it's very difficult for me to put, look up to anyone because I'm just a spiritual being in that living and human experience. It's like, unless I really kind of tap into them and I can find that, that real goodness, um, then I'm not going to look up to them um, in that way. But do I admire women? I admire the woman that is working hard, you know, to, to make a, to do in, their, in her life purpose and to, 
bring her, do her part for the universe. You know, I, I admire every woman that is, that is doing that because it hasn't always been easy for mm. us to do that. So, and also to parent as well on top of, on top of doing that is not, because I do, I do all of those things yeah. by myself. <laughs> so, you know, anyone that does it, I, rec- I respect them. Perfect. So you have all of these things going on. So what are your favourite self-care rituals and practices? How do you take time for you? Okay. I will take, I like my spiritual baths. Um, that's when I really connect to great spirit in the bath. Anytime I'm in water, um, I just really connect. Um, um, and meditation, that's, I go into my little zone. I've got my little quiet place where I meditate. Um, when I'm doing energy work as well, when I'm doing all energy work, um, some of it is is for me, you know, and that is looking after myself. You know, I have to look after myself. Who's going to do it if I don't? beautiful and yeah. so what's coming up for you next what have you got in terms of you got courses offerings programs like let us know everything okay um i've got programs at the moment i'm doing the trauma um and um helping people to re- get from four from the 4d chaos into the 5d reaching their higher self okay um also helping people to see beyond the 3D, knowing what is truth, what is their truth, what is their life purpose. So I'm doing a lot of that kind of work at the moment. Um, I'm doing a lot of healing because there's so much fear and, and or fear out there. So I've been working with a lot of people that are dealing with that, bringing them through that. Um, I've got doing back-to-back readings. Um, I'm uh, wanting to do arrange a massive, a very big seminar where I can speak and do random readings. Um, when I say readings, I do channel readings. Um, I do pull tarot's, but I don't need to. But people like them, so I do it, and it normally confirms what I've um, channel picked up through channeling. Anyway, um, I'm going to write two books. One will be my life story and one will be my spiritual journey. I want to go to Bali and I would like to go to Africa. Um, I want to spend some time in both places. Um, in, the lot, in the bigger picture of what I want to do is open up um, shelters around the, the third world countries mainly for abused women and special needs children the facilities in the con- some countries a lot of the countries do not have the facilities for for this for these areas so that's my bigger picture of what i want to do opening up um, units and schools for the kids and i want to go back to um, india and finish my orphanage <laughs> i have one there so yeah do you? Where is it? Where is it in India? It's in Vijayawada, um, which okay. is, yeah, which comes under Hyderabad. South, South India. Okay, I've not done South yet. Yeah, Andhra Pradesh, yeah. It's, it's um, quite, um, it's not, it's big, but it's not the biggest part of India. Um, it's a very, very poor part of India. So I went there in 2017 just off on a whim on my own <laughs> and opened up an orphanage with five children so i need to um complete that on a wider scale yeah that's so that's another thing that um i'm doing and open up more branches as well um of andrew's healing hand of light i want to put one in the states one in canada and one in Jamaica. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm looking for readers. At some point, I'll, be, I'll start looking for people to help me. Yeah. What a beautiful vision. Wow. Thank you. 
so <laughs> just can you let everybody know where to find you online like your website social media anything you want to share yeah sure um you can find me on facebook under andrea daniel and andrea's not andrea andrea's healing hand of life and you can find me on instagram under andrea's healing hand of light and andrea the lioness and i have a website um, please feel free to join up um, and that's www.andreashealinghandoflight.com i look thank forward to you on there yeah you're welcome thank you thank you for having me thank you to andrea for joining me on this week's episode of her conversations and thank you for listening you can find out more about me on my website carolmaywittick.com c-a-r-o-l-m-a-e-w-h-i-t-t-i-c-k.com you can also follow me on facebook under the same name and also i'm on twitter and instagram under kazmik that's c-a-z-m-i-c-k Until the next episode and next week, have a good one. Thank you for listening.